So let's look at an overview of a framework called STRUTS. What is STRUTS? It's a framework, a completely different framework from JSF and uh, JSP and Servlet, except that it's older, more mature framework uh, from those uh, frameworks. And we can mix and match pieces as we become more advanced developers. We can mix and match different frameworks. So Struts is a framework for a web-based application development. The definition of a framework is simply a library of classes and files that solve a particular set of well-known and commonly occurring logic, business logic problems, programs, that kind of thing. Struts is completely open source and freely available. So we see here the URL to the uh, Apache Struts, uh, dot org. if you're interested in learning more about it. What we're doing here is not really teaching Struts so much as giving you a broad overview in case you have to speak intelligently in a design meeting. You have to integrate pieces of a Struts application into your application or your applications have to work side by side in the same application environment. So let's look a little more at um, some of the nits and bits. The Struts framework covers the web front end only. In other words, the view and the controller layer of what we call the model view controller architecture. Uh, the Struts framework doesn't provide any APIs or any new programming model for how you structure your model layer in a model view controller architecture. Struts-based applications are deployed as any other OR file. You have to uh, add certain APIs. You have to add certain utility jar files to it. But the actual deployment is done just like any other web application. There are now uh, currently two flavors or two different um, Struts uh, Struts flavors, uh, extensions of Struts. There's the uh, traditional classic action framework, what's referred to as the action framework. This framework is the most mature um, and is still most widely used. Newer or more uh, newer to the game, as it were, is what's called the shale framework, which is a derivation of the struts framework, the next generation framework that builds on top of Java server faces, which has many of the features of uh, struts as a framework, but builds a richer UI. So the shale framework builds on top of JSF, and JSF built on top of the original struts. So why consider Struts? The Struts framework gives us ready-made solutions to many common uh, problems that we generally face by uh, face every day in the everyday development of a web application. For example, very commonly we need form validation. We need form input to object data synchronization. We're constantly calling getters and setters and um, uh, passing that data from form input to um, our data layer. It's very common to need the ability to control page flow without hard coding uh, file names in our Java code. Struts um, solves a lot of these problems that are actually quite common in just your average web application development. Core, servlet, and JSP specifications leave these common problems to be solved with the uh, relevant APIs for servlets or for JSPs and JSPs, you know, using standard tags. That's still a solution that needs to be provided by developers. By using the Struts framework, you can get to richer functioning applications much more quickly. Struts applications, uh, by their nature, follow most of the best practices, most industry best practices, that make them uh, more maintainable. In other words, they're easy to extend and easy to modify. So uh, Struts applications follow proper model view controller layer separation, as well as the implementation of uh, internationalization for externalized strings to provide multi-language support. There are some key components to any Struts application. 
the controller layer. Uh, the controller layer is created by using what are called custom action classes. The Struts framework gives us or provides action servlet and request processor to form the controller layer of a model view controller architecture. For the view layer, uh, standard JSP files plus some uh, specific struts tags are used um, as well as JSTL tags, uh, JSTL being the Java standard tag library um, that you see actually integrated now as part of the Java EE API for servlets and, and the Java EE specification for servlets and JSPs. The struts tag libraries, as all tag libraries do, uh, struts tag libraries speed up many of the aspects of view development. Um, currently, because JSTL has been rolled into um, the JSTL specification and most of the tags are available in modern application servers, it's preferable to use JSTL tags independent of or as replacements for many struts tags. A little vocabulary note in looking at struts. Views uh, in the struts framework and in the struts uh, configuration, views are known as forwards or action forwards. Another component of struts is something known as form beans. Form beans are actually Java bean classes. If they're designated as form beans in the struts framework, struts can synchronize the data um, between an HTML form and a form bean object, just as we saw with managed beans, or you have seen with managed beans in the JSF framework. Form beans are used mainly to capture user input as an object, in other words, as a Java object, as well as the Struts framework also uses it to pre-populate form fields with um, data from the object properties. For the model layer, Struts does not provide any programming model for the model layer. It's not covered in the Struts framework. Form beans, in some cases, can be used as what are called data transfer objects, if you've been looking at that API and that specification. However, this design idea is evolving and um, in hot debates between um, spirited developers, this is uh, often quite a spirited debate about form beans and the specification thereof. In the controller layer, you have something called the action servlet. Um, the action servlet is a framework provided servlet that accomplishes a few things. It provides the entry point into a struts based application and the normal servlet do get and do post methods um, call what's called the process method of a request processor entity. We've seen a slightly different take on this in the servlet API and working with the request dispatcher. In struts, it's called request processor. The request processor is a utility class that is supplied by the struts framework. It's based off of, or uh, the way the request processor works is based on the requested URL, it determines from the parameters which action class in the struts application needs to handle this specific request. It stores URL parameters in a form bean, in other words, Java bean, and optionally you can assign validation to that form bean. The request processor then calls the execute method of the specified action class and renders the resource, usually a JSP file, that is configured and indicated in the action forward object that is by uh, condition of this framework. The action forward object is returned by the action class. Chain of command. As of struts 1.3, the request processor and the action class components have been replaced with um, a, a design idea uh, referred to as chain of command. Instead of a single action class, an action can be actually composed of multiple commands that can be chained together, much like we saw with the servlet filters. Uh, the commands that are to be executed are specified in a struts configuration file.
this allows us greater flexibility in controlling what happens when an action is executed. The commands uh, give us much more fine-grained control um, by using configuration files, um, promoting better reuse and making our application more flexible. It's not required, however, um, but old school 1.2 style action class can still be used. So don't worry that your, uh, your skills have immediately become outdated. So visually what's happening in a struts application, you have a request that comes into the web container. The service method is um, uh, run on the action servlet. So the action servlet becomes the single point of entry in um, a struts application. It's part of the framework. And from the action servlet with a direction to the request processor, the request processor and the action servlet working together are determining what action needs to be executed based on the incoming request. And the action is actually associated with a view. Um, and so if a particular action is the one that's being requested, then we know which view, in other words, which JSP it is that we need to execute. In the view layer of a struts application, you have a standard JSP page generally. Uh, the JSP file names are never directly hard coded. Of course, you never want to say never, but generally almost ever, kind of sort of not quite always, but never uh, directly hard coded into the action class that would tie the file names too closely to the action class source code. They are referred to by a name which gets mapped with normal URL mapping, but in a configuration file called the struts configuration file, one of possibly many struts configuration files. The action classes themselves control the page flow, the navigational structure, the navigation rules. The execute method returns an object of type action forward and that object contains the name of a view. The system then locates that uh, uh, the JSP file that's associated with that view name and forwards to that particular JSP. The tag libraries are pretty straightforward. Struts uh, brings their own tag libraries to the table, so there are several uh, predefined JSP tags. Additionally, because it's a JSP, you can use any other tag libraries as well to supplement the behavior of your struts views. The form bean is simply a regular Java bean that represents the data. The bean instance represents whatever data is submitted with a form. However, to be a form bean, it has to extend a particular uh, struts class called action form in order for this form to magically be associated with form input data. Your Java bean, which normally doesn't have to extend anything, uh, has to extend uh, a version of action form. These are also known as action form classes. They're not generally referred to as action form beans. So you may see these referred to as uh, form beans, uh, but they're generally referred to as action form classes or action form beans. Once this configuration is in place, then the struts implementation can transfer uh, user input when a form is submitted and instantiate a bean and the bean's properties if the bean is designated as a form bean. This simplifies an awful lot of everyday form submission processing. The application and the application uh, framework works with a form bean object rather than directly calling get parameter on the HTTP servlet request object. Also, the system can pre-populate any input fields on a form with properties that are existing in the current uh, form bean instance. This is very helpful um, when the developer is creating forms that are to be used to update data. When the form is rendered, the input fields um, are uh, easily populated with default values. So a little diagram of what's going on here on the server side. 
um, on the right hand side of the screen, we have a, an instance of, let's say, email being um, with properties for recipients for subject for, ma for message and the appropriate being getter setters. The uh, being is configured to be a form being associated with a particular form. And so when the form is rendered, the instance of the email being is used to populate the fields. And when the form is submitted, the values, whatever the user has changed, are used to populate the properties of the form being. A simple action class in the struts framework gives us an implementation of the execute method. A couple of key things to uh, note here. In the implementation of our execute method, we're receiving an action form object. We're also receiving HTTP servlet request and response. Um, getting the parameter, first name, request.get parameter, and based on some logic, if name not equal to null, then next page equals success. And then the final piece of this execute is return mapping.findForward next page. So it's going to look in a configuration file um, for, uh, in this case, success, uh, something that's labeled success so it knows how to uh, forward the request over to the view layer. Much of this configuration, one of the things that made uh, Strut so popular for so long is that much of this externalized logic flow, validation, um, all of this um, is handled in external XML configuration files. So Strut's configuration is uh, done in a number of XML files, one being primarily a file called struts-config.xml, lo usually located in the uh, web application directory structure under web-inf. All the struts config files, um, including the main one, must conform to the DTD specified um, within the particular struts framework by version that um, you're working in. So within uh, even the basic struts-config XML, um, this file configures a number of things. It will define the actions, define the form beans, specify global forwards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These can grow quite complicated in, in advanced struts um, applications. Uh, that are heavily struts configured, you will see this one XML file, you may see this one XML file broken into multiple XML files and mapped together um, into a central uh, federated configuration of a struts application. So for example, for our hello action um, in struts XML, you, or struts-config.xml, we have two forwards defined for an action. Um, we have action mappings, and in there we have one action with the path slash hello um, of type hello action. That's our extended struts class. And two forwards, one called success, one called stranger. And notice the path just goes to a JSP, either greet JSP or sorry JSP. So based on the results in the execute method, the configuration of the struts application knows how to route uh, the incoming requests. To invoke hello action, we would enter a specific URL. Um, generally, you see with struts applications, you see the dot do suffix at the end of the URL. This isn't actually a file name called hello.do. It's actually a mapping that's in the struts configuration for the particular action called hello. You can also, right on that URL, you can pass request parameters, URL uh, request parameters, as we see, you know, especially with testing, in this case, uh, pending to the URL question mark first name equal bill. In reading these URLs, context root is actually the context root of the web module. So you would substitute, obviously in this URL, you would substitute your context root for the context root of the web module when you're accessing it via URL. The uh, 
asterisk.do um, in the uh, mapping is generally mapped to uh, the action servlet in web XML. Notice web XML is a standard web deployment descriptor for a war file, not uh, one of the strut specific configurations. So what is traditionally has been done, especially with earlier implementations of struts, is that the web XML in your web application has a mapping to asterisk.do, uh, dot do being the traditional uh, suffix for an action. The request comes then via the web XML mapping. The request comes to the action servlet the framework then uh, determines that the request path is slash hello. The action corresponding to that path is gleaned from the struts configuration. The server then instantiates an object of the action class unless one is already existing to work with the action. The system then invokes the executed method of that action class, of our implemented action class. So let's go take a look at building a very simple struts application in Eclipse. So let's see the workings of a, a struts application in JBoss. In order to provide the implementation for uh, JBoss uh, to handle the struts framework, I needed to download and import into my application. And this is a simple dynamic web application in Eclipse. I imported a number of JAR files. Um, this is part of the uh, Struts framework, and I need to be able to make it visible so that it can run. In keeping with my best practices to not um, override the or replace or or augment the server implementation i've kept the struts implementation for my application within my application itself so there are a number of supporting libraries that you see that i've made visible within my application by downloading them and importing in them into the lib directory or live directory under my application under web content there are some key struts classes, the action class, the form class, and there's a key configuration file. Let's take a look at what these are. I have a form uh, class. If I open it up, I can see that the uh, form class is extending uh, struts action form uh, so that it can be designated as a form bean. The only thing my form bean does is handle a private variable message, and um, I've got my getters and setters for my form bean. It's also implementing uh, serializable by providing a static final uh, called serial version UID. This is for Java serialization, which is necessary in Java serialization for beans. Beans should always, Java beans should always provide this. Another key piece of this application is the action class. If I open the action class, I've implemented the execute method, um, which is common in the struts framework. This is what is called by the request processor. The only thing that my execute method does is set message and return using find forward returns a string in this case success and we'll see how the mapping from success takes us from one view to the next in just a second and this is done with the struts config XML. The struts config XML is the common configuration file that we see in struts applications. There can be more, but we're looking at a very simple application. If I open struts config, I see a few things. First, my uh, form bean, I'll expand this so you can see it. My uh, form bean is uh, configured using the form beans and form bean element within struts config. I also see an element called global forwards. This is your uh, site flow mapping where you designate forwards 
um, in our application. Notice the path is set to something called hello world.do, very common in Struts application. And then I see action mappings. This is where the uh, mapping, in this case forward, the mapping uh, to the string success actually flows in the path to a JSP called hello world JSP. Let's take a look at those JSPs. Um, the Hello World JSP simply prints out the property message from the form bean. Okay, I'm using the tag lib library via the tag lib directive from the struts framework. Okay, so in, as part of those uh, libraries that I imported into my application, the tag lib. Um, or the tag libraries are there as well. And so the form that's associated, uh, the form being that's associated with this hello world form is um, the getters and setters will be called by the framework. And the only thing I'm doing is getting a message from that form being. Now some modifications need to be made to the um, web XML to incorporate the framework of struts in the standard web XML. Notice I've got a servlet definition. I've got a uh, servlet, the servlet class again is coming from the struts framework for the action servlet. You may remember that the action servlet is the point of entry for an application, for web application. I'm also setting a config parameter. This is again, um, we're using an initialization parameter of the action servlet itself to point to the struts config. This can be a more complicated configuration. We're going with the standard struts config file, but this is a nice feature to have where we're externalizing configuration parameters. I also have a servlet mapping to action to the to the servlet itself i've set up a servlet mapping by the name these two names match between the servlet and the servlet mapping and my url pattern as is traditional with uh, struts applications because struts has uh, matured so much this has been around for quite a while you quite often see the url mapping for asterisk.do for all um, applications in struts now, notice the welcome file list in my application. When I run the application, the system's going to look for one of these files. The file that I implemented for this particular application, just as a demonstration, is the file index.jsp. So back in my application, I actually have an index.jsp. Very, very simple. All it does is redirect to a forward called hello world, which we saw the mapping of in our struts config. The tag library, again, tags logic from the struts implementation actually um, has a redirect tag that allows me to use a tag to render an actual HTTP redirect. Um, so if, um, if this page is hit, a redirect will forward. It will look for a forward in the struts config. And we've mapped in our struts config uh, forward hello world actually goes to um, our hello world JSP. So those are all the working parts of our Struts application. We're not going to run a specific JSP. We're not going to run a specific servlet. What we're going to do is run the application. I see that my application is already published um, on my JBoss server. Everything is synchronized. I haven't changed anything. We're just trying to demonstrate the working parts of a Struts application so you get a feel for how this framework is um, at one time familiar for JSP and servlet developers and slightly different. It's a, a different paradigm um, for application development. It's a different framework. So I'm going to right click on Struts demo. What I expect to see, it's already published. Um, 
what I expect to see is eventually the results from Hello World because when the application is run, it's looking for index JSP in the wel from the welcome file list, and that JSP simply forwards to Hello World, and Hello World JSP just grabs the property value from the form Java. So right-click on Struts Demo, run as, run on server, and very quickly, I see that uh, the message hello world is printed from my form bean being associated and my action actually setting the message on my form bean hello world um, and forwarding, passing a, a value success that is mapped in struts config. Very simple demonstration of a very powerful framework that has been extended and reused and matured over the years to work alongside of other frameworks for developers such as JSF, uh, JSP, and the Servlet API.